Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Marlene Francois Madden. I am a licensed clinical social worker. And in this video, I'm going to share my journey about how I went from social work to private practice. Um, so literally my journey, I would say from the time I was five years old, I knew I wanted to be in this field. So I thought I was gonna become a psychologist and I just knew that I just had to pursue it. So how did that all start? I have an undergraduate degree in psychology from Penn State University and literally while I was an undergrad for my last two years in undergrad I spent a lot of time having internships so I interned in a middle school I interned at a shelter for mommy and children I also did an internship at an autism therapeutic after-school program with children and adolescents so during my senior year, my internship was literally my paid internship. And one of the tips that I can give you guys is that while you are in undergrad, communicate with the department head of your program. So my undergrad is in psychology and I made sure to connect with the person that was in charge of the psychology program. And I took a lot of classes with him in charge. Like a lot of my classes were his classes, right? So that was it, that afforded me a tons of opportunities. So by the time I graduated, I graduated on a Saturday, and by that Monday, I started a full-time job, and I was working as a mental health counselor, as I like to call it, or a mental health aide in Pennsylvania at an acute partial care program for children and adolescents, and worked there for a few months, and then eventually I transitioned on to work for Child Protective Services. And during my time working at Child Protective Services, that's when I realized I need to go back to grad school. And making that decision to figure out, do you want to go back to grad school for psychology or social work? And that's, that was where it was like, okay, well, which one do I do? But most of my supervisors, most of my professors had a master's in social work, and I just knew that was just the way, I need, the route that was best for me to take at the time. And so I applied to grad school. I ended up at Rutgers. University right in New Jersey and it was a two-year program and I got my master's in social work there and during the two-year program a few questions I get from social workers are okay how do you navigate grad school and do your internship and a full-time job how do you do all that so um, I quit my job working at Child Protective Services moved to New Jersey with no job and said I'm just gonna go by a leap of faith and during my during that time I applied for a job I received a job interview and I got a job offer and a job offer also allowed me to do my internship so it was a paid internship and I was getting paid way more than my job at Child Protective Services so I ended up doing that and my job was pretty much offering life skills and case management for children that were aging out of foster care so 18 to 22 years old so I'm telling you guys a little bit about my background so you have an idea of what type of opportunities are available for you as you're pursuing your master's in social work and what I did was I took all my classes in one day and then my other four days I was at work working eight to ten hour shifts and I was in the community doing case management and life skills with the adolescents and I would review their biopsychosocial and a bunch of other stuff that we had to do there. Then eventually my second year, my internship was in an adult psychiatric hospital setting. So what does that look like working in a psychiatric hospital, right, for your internship? Doing biopsychosocials, working closely with the other social workers to go to treatment team meetings, learning how to write a treatment plan, learning how to do discharge planning, learning how to run groups on a psychiatric unit, working closely with a psychiatrist and your nurse and your case manager, the recreational therapist, the entire team to learn about medication, to learn about the difference between schizophrenia and schizoaffective, bipolar one, bipolar two. So I had to learn so much about what was going on with all those diagnoses, but I loved it. And so after I graduated, I ended up getting a job offer in the hospital, working as a psychiatric social worker, did that for four years, eventually got my licensed clinical social work. Well, before that, I should say, when I was graduating my MSW program, I passed my exam a week before graduation, and then I received my LSW. Once I submitted all the paperwork to the state of New Jersey, got my LSW, um, completed my hours, took me three times to take the LCSW exam. Yes, I failed three years in a row, but then I ended up passing my exam and I was a licensed clinical social worker and I was working in a psychiatric hospital. Eventually I left there 
and started working in a therapeutic foster care agency with teenagers, providing individual outpatient therapy, I should say, um, and working closely with teens who dealt with trauma. And from there, I decided, okay, well, it's time to start venturing off in private practice, right? So I started off working in a group practice for about a year and a half, and then I left there to start my own private practice. So um, once you can know that, no matter where you start your journey, it doesn't end there, right? So when you think of social work, I want you to know that it is a diverse field. There's so much you can do. I have worked in you know, child protective services to acute partial care programs, working with juvenile delinquents, to working with the geriatric population, um, adults who may have suffered with substance use, to working with children um, in outpatient settings, and now to working in private practice where I can manage my schedule and do things how I want to do things. So hopefully in the future I can do another video on private practice so you guys can learn more about it. But I just want you to know a little bit about my journey about where I started. It's not where I end. And I'm still learning and growing. If private practice is something that you desire, please reach out to me. I do have a webinar on my website on how to start your own private practice. And I would love for you to check it out. So please feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can continue to see more content from me. Thank you guys.